Now we're going to get started in our Sunday school lesson. We're going to continue this um, study that we began uh, many weeks ago on the Bible and health, the Bible and nutrition. Um, the reason we're doing this is because the Lord Jesus said in Matthew chapter 26 to the men in the upper room that you know we need to watch and pray, we need to enter not into temptation, and the reality is the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And uh, one of the things that will sometimes hinder us in, in following on with the Lord and doing the things He would have us to do in spiritually is our flesh is weak. Um, dis-ease is one of the ailments that, uh, <laughs> that afflicts mankind. And often dis-ease is um, self-induced. Uh, and, and so if we would follow the uh, nutritional principles laid out in the Word of God as the Jewish people did for centuries and lived beyond everyone else, uh, as I was telling you, the natural uh, life expectancy of a Jew through the centuries from the time of Moses, 1400 B.C. until this time that we live in now was always 70 to 80 years that was not the life expectancy of Gentiles. Gentiles died at the age of 38, 39, 40, 41. They, they, they had very short life expectancies up until the turn of the past century, going from the 1800s to the 1900s. And then you saw in developed nations an increase in the life expectancy, finally catching up with the Jew. What was the difference? Well, the Gentiles were finally starting to pick up on some of the principles that the Jews had been following for all those centuries in terms of sanitation, number one, and then in terms of uh, diet. And there was a big resurgence of proper diet in the United States of America in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. And... Um, but we've fallen away from that in the late 1900s, as you can see, the mess that we're in. And so we're looking at these principles, and we were just looking at basic Bible principles. Uh, again, a lot of this work was done by Dr. Don Colbert. He's an MD who's a Christian, and he follows uh, the Bible in, in many respects and takes a lot of his material from the Bible, but a lot from science too. And science is okay. Science will eventually catch up with the Bible if you give it enough time. It's always centuries, centuries behind what God has revealed in His Word. But still, he'll, he'll take both of them. It's called the seven pillars of health. And we were looking at the seven pillars that the Lord was kind of setting up as He went through the Word of God. Uh, the first pillar that we saw is the importance of rest. Your body needs rest. At night, uh, your body is regenerating the various cells and repairing the cells and doing things like that. And you need to give it adequate rest. Uh, we saw another important uh, pillar is... Uh, the fact that you want your major fluid intake to be water, okay, not beer, not carbonated soft drinks, not sugared drinks, uh, not things like that, not alcohol, of course, at all, but uh, you want it to be water because um, you are two-thirds water. And the Lord uh, gave wells of water to his people in the land of Israel so they could have uh, fresh water. And water is very, very important for you to drink. We also saw that... Um, Another important pillar is the pillar of, let's say, avoiding the uh, deadly foods. And we talked about the seven deadly foods. And we looked at uh, refined uh, foods are, are kind of deadly, refined sugar. And we saw how they strip away the important uh, molasses and the iron and the vitamins in there. And they give you this refined sugar, refined uh, flour. And we saw how they uh, take the wheat which is composed of three important uh, components. God does things in three. His fingerprints are all throughout nature. And it has the bran, you know, which has the healthy fiber and the B vitamins and the trace minerals. And then it has the uh, germ inside, which has the important essential uh, acids, fatty acids that you need. There are, the body needs important essential fatty acids and healthy oils in there. And then there's finally the endosperm, which is that uh, starchy portion. And we saw that in uh, industry today, they strip away the bran and sell it to you separately. And they strip away the germ and sell you wheat germ. And then they 
they just refine the flour into just the endosperm and they strip out the protein and the fat and the minerals and the vitamins and all that. And I remember the saying that the doctor had, the whiter the bread, the sooner you're dead. And we saw all the problems that that uh, white, uh, starchy bread, refined flour has, avoiding that, avoiding processed meats, uh, the type of things, the, the cold cuts and the hot dogs and all those. And we looked at that. You can get the tapes. Avoiding processed fats. And we looked at how they invented that process in the early 1900s, the trans fats, the hydrogenated fats, avoiding uh, some of the chemicals that are put into a lot of the foods, the MSG, the aspartame, the Splenda, things like that. So, so we've seen some things to avoid. Today we want to look at some things that we can actually appropriate and that we can eat and that will be a blessing to us. And um, this would be called living foods. Uh, the, the Lord would like us to eat the foods the way He's prepared them in nature. They're alive, they're vibrant, they have the healthy ingredients, the vitamins, the enzymes, the nutrients that God's put in there. Um, Exodus uh, chapter 23, go there and uh, verse 25. The, the Bible is seed. You plant a seed and you get a tree. And so you get a, a verse that's a seed and if we water it, we get a tree of knowledge and understanding and that's what we're doing. And um, Exodus chapter uh, 23, and the Lord says in uh, verse 25, And ye shall uh, serve the Lord your God, and He shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take Sickness away from the midst of thee. Now, now you think of bread as just a slice of bread, but the Lord is looking at bread as the staple component of their diet, uh, the, the healthy grains that they eat. And he says, I will bless these things as you serve me. And when you eat properly the right bread, one of the healthy living foods to eat is whole grain. And we'll study this. And you eat this and you drink this water, it will take sickness away. Now, I know at that particular time, uh, the Lord really had His hand on that nation, Israel. Because Israel is a physical people in a physical place at a particular time, a physical nation with physical promises and uh, blessings. And they're portraits of the spiritual. Now, for you and me today, we're a spiritual people in the New Testament and we have spiritual blessings. And so our bread and our water, of course, is the Word of God and our prayer. And the Lord takes away the spiritual diseases, the mental things that would trouble us. But still, there is a, an aspect of the physical in this reality here for us today. And if we eat the right kinds of food, it will minimize the illnesses we have. Now, there's still going to be some illnesses that creep up on us. But I'll tell you, my observation in 25 years of medicine and watching, and I, being an anesthesiologist, I got to see a lot of patients. I saw a thousand patients a year. And, you know, an average doctor has his, I don't know how many patients he's got, but, but we have to take care of every surgeon and everybody's patients. And so I would see, I've seen 25,000 patients. And just watching and paying attention and seeing, uh, the reality is the majority of illnesses are self-induced in America. We're killing ourselves by not having the right uh, food and the right uh, drink. And uh, now, yes, there are diseases. You're going to get diseases even if you eat right and exercise right. W why? Because that's just the nature of being part of a creation now that's cursed, Romans chapter 8. Okay? And these things may come upon you. And actually, in a, in a strange way, when I am ill, it's a, a blessing in a way because it takes me away from the hustle and bustle. And the only thing I can do at that time is just commune with the Lord in prayer. So, so time of illness is actually some sweet times for me occasionally. But then the Lord I've got to get me healthy to get me back and doing my work again. But uh, we see things differently through different eyes when we're saved. You will still get some diseases occasionally. And one day you'll get a disease that won't get better and you'll die. And then you'll get your full healing when you get your new body. So I'm looking forward to that day when that one comes. I keep waiting for the doctor to say, it's terminal, Mike. You're going to die. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> We're not going to do anything just because then I get through the door and I go and I finally get the new body. But, but we see things differently when we're saved. But understand that even eating right and, and drinking right, you'll still get an occasional disease, yes. 
But, but why maximize that downtime? Let's do it right so that when the Spirit is willing, the flesh indeed can follow. So the Lord wants to bless the healthy living foods that you can eat. The three categories of healthy living foods. Fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. This should be a major portion of your diet. These these should probably comprise 66 to 70% of your diet. Should be fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. A diet rich in fruits and vegetables. What do they do? Well, the lowers chance of heart disease, lowers your chance of cancer. There's the two major debilitating diseases in America. The number one cause of death, heart disease. Number two cause cancer. And and not just death, but until someone dies, that heart disease waxes and wanes through the course of years in that particular person with frequent bouts and attacks that lays them down and limits their lifestyle. Cancer does the same type of thing. I know it eventually takes you out, but until it takes you out, it lays you up for a while and prevents you from doing what the Lord would have you to do. Fruits and vegetables decrease this. They reduce blood pressure. They lower the levels of the bad cholesterol, the LDL. Um, they have... Fruits and vegetables have a fancy term. It's called phytonutrients. Have you ever heard that term? Phyto. It's just a fancy word. The, the scientists like to invent words to confuse you. Phyto is just the, the word that means a vegetable or plant. It means nutrients that comes from vegetables or plants. So that's one of the things that modern education does is teach you words nobody else knows but th so that you think you're smart. But it's just basic common sense. These are just the natural nutrients that comes out of these, these plants and these vegetables, and they're very healthy for you. There was a study done in 2006, the Harvard School of Public Health, and uh, they had reviewed the, the phytonutrients, these important nutrients found in these uh, plants, these uh, vegetables, these fruits, and they found that uh, these protect against not some, but all kinds of cancer. And I know that most of us are scared like this, this, there's this big lurking devil called cancer waiting to pounce on you and it comes out of nowhere. It doesn't come out of nowhere, folks. It usually we allow it to happen to ourselves because we take in bad things that, that damage the chromosomes and allow the cells to go crazy. If we wouldn't take in those bad things, those chromosomes would do pretty well on their own. I know occasionally, again, one out of 50 times, there might be some genetic malformation that causes a cancer, but most of the times we're inducing it. You think of a common one, what about smokers and lung cancer? It's those chemicals that are damaging the chromosomes in the lungs. And then when you get intestinal cancer, it's because we're probably eating foods that have toxins, and I'll show you. But when we take in these fruits and vegetables, they have nutrients that actually strengthen your immune system against cancer. Yes, your immune system can fight cancer. You have white blood cells, you have killer cells, you have T lymphocytes that will fight, but your immune system has to be tuned up to do it. And so these have it. Now the best way to eat your fruits and vegetables is the best of all is, is raw. Uh, eating them, uh, actually fruits unpeeled. Now, now um, I made that mistake for years, peeling them. The, the reason is the peel uh, provides a couple of benefits uh, to it. Uh, the peel um, has a fiber, and I'm going to show you how important that is in a moment. And fiber is very important in, in uh, your diet. So there's a natural fiber in there. Another thing, and I don't understand why the Lord designed it this way, but the, the, the vitamins that are contained in a fruit for some reason line up underneath the peel. And so when you and I peel it, we actually throw a lot of the vitamins of that particular fruit away. I didn't realize this and I did it in ignorance for a while. And, uh, and I was getting, you know, the water content of the fruit. And fruit is 90% water and you do need water and there's a good way to get it. And I was getting the sugar of the fruit, but I was missing a lot of the vitamins and the fiber by peeling. Now, one of the concerns you may have is, well, what about the pesticides that are on the peel? And uh, uh, just wash carefully. My, my wife has this wash that she has at home. It's a produce wash. It's kind of like an oil or something. You put it on there, and she's got this little Brillo pad, and I brush and clean it. And I just did it this morning before I came and washed my apple and my pear and then uh, cut them up and, and had them. And... Oh, I still got some in the other room. I got to finish it. And anyways, but but I I, um, 
I did that, I do that every morning. And uh, so you've got to wash carefully. Um, some people uh, believe, you know, to get organic. I know there are people that talk about organic uh, grown uh, vegetables and, and fruits. He's got a organic. Organic is grown with the addition of only animal or vegetable fertilizer, such as manure, bone meal, compost, no artificial pesticides or chemical fertilizers. So they feel that maybe organic is the best to go. I just want to stop and give you a do they? Yeah. yeah, and see, I, I didn't know this because I heard a guy, I guess I'll give you a couple of thoughts. I just, so I'm going to share this thought and then a second thought. I heard a guy that was, uh, uh, he was involved in, in agriculture and he called in one day to the Rush Limbaugh show and he was talking to him saying that he, he in it, as a distributor now, deals in both organic farms and regular farms and he said there's almost no difference in, in the quality. So, so I don't know. But, but let me say this. You, you kind of know my mindset, okay, if you've heard me for a while. Uh, we'll talk first about, it. We'll, we'll look at the spiritual, then I'll take it to the physical. On the spiritual level, what the Lord showed me early on is that there were, you know, sorry saints, okay, <laughs> and they're the people that are saved, and praise the Lord, they're saved. That's the most important thing. They're going to go to heaven. The Lord's going to fix them up one day. But right here in this world, I feel sorry for them. They don't have the right Bible. They got an NIV. They got a living Bible. They got whatever. Because of that, they don't get fed properly. Because they're not fed properly, they're very weak and anemic for the Lord. They can't witness for Him. They have a, a very poor witness. If you were to go to the workplace of a sorry saint and talk to the people that work with that sorry saint, they go, that's not much of a Christian. He or she still gossips. They still explode and swear. Blue streaks. They come in late. They leave early. They, they, they give us as much problems as anyone else. You know, they're, they're just, you feel sorry for them. And it's, it's not entirely their fault. that They don't have the right to Bible. And they're not they're strengthening themselves in the Lord. And, and then the Lord showed me another group of people that uh, are, are like super saints. And, and praise the Lord for the super saints. I'd like to be one one day. And they're like, um, again, think of the Lord's army. We're all in God's army. The Lord is a man of war. We're part of his army. The sorry saints are AWOL. They're, they're gone, man. They just, they just left the base. They don't go off in any more battles. They don't do anything. And uh, that's a terrible thing. The super saints are like full-blown, full-tilt, green beret, 50 push-ups an hour. They never know how to rest. They're always in your face. They're always reproving and rebuking. And, and, and amen for them. I hope I could be one of them. I, I found I can't be. I can just be regulation army. I'm a simple saint. I'm kind of in the middle. I don't do 50 push-ups an hour. I do my 10 push-ups in the morning, and I, and I do my reading. And if there's a battle and God says, look, you're out to battle this afternoon, I'm out there and I'll fight on the front lines. But when the battle's over, I'll go back to the PX and I'll relax and I'll have a, a Coke. And I'll sit down and, oh, okay, man, you know, I'm relaxing a little bit. Now, Super Saint gets mad at me for that. It's the same with food. You've got these folks that have no idea what they're eating, and they eat at McDonald's, and they do their things, and they're literally killing themselves. And then you've got these people uh, who are just, they, they're so perfidious and persnickety about every, i got to have organic, and it's got to be this, and they check all that out. And, and, me, I just, look, these are the basic Bible principles, and here's the difference. To me, a sorry saint or a sorry eater tempts the Lord, does what he wants, and claims Psalm 91, get me out of this, Lord, after all, I'm yours. And the Lord says, I can't do that. And the super guy has so much trust in his own ability, so much trust in the organic farmer, that he's lost his trust in the Lord. I think it's better to trust in the Lord than put confidence in men. Any kind of men, whether it's super saint men or whether it's super saint farmers. So my recommendation is this. The Lord's made these foods. Let's take them, even if they're not organic. Let's clean them up and let's appropriate and enjoy them and, and go down the middle path. And that's me. But, but if you are inclined to be a green beret, praise the Lord. If you are inclined to be one of those organic people, praise the Lord. I mean, you're, you're beyond me. I can't keep up with you. Um, to me, the Christian life is a marathon and I can't sprint down a marathon. I've got to pace myself. So I'm, I'm kind of simple down the middle. So however that may help you, amen. But, so the organic thing, I don't know. If you would incline that way, be my guest. For me, we buy regular stuff and I wash it and I eat it. And unpeeled is, is the best way to do it. If you can't um, get it that way, frozen fruits and frozen vegetables are okay. 
They really are. They've lost some of their nutrients, but not many. The worst is canned. When they've canned them and they've put them through all this heat process and this vacuumizing process and all the things that they do, it leaches out a lot of the vitamins and a lot of the minerals and a lot of the phytonutrients are, are destroyed. And I'm going to show you in a minute a diagram of the intestine and what the molecules look like. And, and it may help a little bit. So, so uh, raw is the best. If you can't eat raw, your fruits or vegetables, uh, especially vegetables, then, then steamed is the best way to prepare vegetables. Um, the steaming, uh, for some reason, uh, allows the vegetable to heat up, but it doesn't destroy the enzymes. Most of the enzymes are preserved inside of them. Um, if, if you can't steam, then you do something called stir frying. Now, I wish my wife were here. I'm not good at this nutrition, this uh, preparatory stuff. You know, I'm, I'm kind of the classroom. She's the lab. But uh, stir frying is is the other way to do it. Um, if you don't do it too long, don't overcook. They found that if you overcook, if you cook something for more than a half hour, uh, you've destroyed practically every. You've turned a living food into a dead food. Okay, and and you don't want to do that, so maybe that'll be a help to you. All right, what kinds of fruits and and vegetables uh, should you eat? Well, all, all kinds. They're made by the Lord. The Lord uh, prepared them in the garden. Genesis chapter one. You remember in Genesis chapter one, He said, "This shall be meat for you." M E A T. Uh, we think of meat as dead flesh. God thinks of meat as the healthy foods that he's provided. It's meat. It's appropriate. It's good for you. It's the right thing to build you up. Um, carrots, tomatoes, uh, strawberries, tangerines, grapes, oranges, you know, whatever's in season, amen. Enjoy it and, and uh, have at it. These living fruits and vegetables, they contain antioxidants, all the nutrients we talked about. There's two types of vegetables. There's the starchy and the non-starchy. The non-starchy, spinach, lettuce, uh, cabbage, uh, broccoli, green beans, asparagus, Brussels sprouts. Um, wonderful. I like all those things. Radishes, turnips, cauliflower. Um, these are all healthy and uh, good to eat. Um, uh, th th they don't have a lot of starch. Starch is a carbohydrate. The starchy ones have carbohydrates. Uh, what's a carbohydrate? Okay, let me see if I can explain some things as to how how the Lord put this stuff together. When you eat foods, there are, are three types of basic molecules you're taking in. God, the Lord does things in threes, okay? You see His fingerprints everywhere. Protein, carbohydrate, and fat. And, and the combination of those three things will allow the Lord, you know, He'll, he'll build a cell with all its components, the nucleus, the mitochondria, the endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, everything that's needed, he can build from those three things. The Lord does things in threes, protein, carbohydrate, fats. Okay, You need all three of them. But here's what he does. Those uh, food products are usually strung together. They're holding hands. They're like little building blocks. So if this were a carbohydrate, a starch is a complex carbohydrate. Here it is. Complex carbohydrate. It's made up of individual building blocks of, of uh, molecules C6. Six carbon uh, chain, little ring, all strung together. And that little six carbon ring is called glucose for the most part. There's other ones very similar to it, uh, fructose and galactose. But basically, that they're just these six carbon rings all strung together. Like, like when kids have those plastic blocks and they lock together, and you ever see those plastic blocks? That, that's how it is. Your carbohydrates come like that. Individually, it's a sugar. Strung together, it's a carbohydrate. They call it a starch when it's all strung together. So a starchy vegetable has these long, complex chains of sugar. Now, the sugar is important because your body gets its energy from sugar. Not only can it build a few parts of your body from the sugar, it gets its energy if, um, if this were a cell, this room were a cell, and we're all parts of the cell inside of here. But to build this particular cell structure, the Lord predominantly would use protein structural apparatus. He would use insulation of fat. And then he would use carbohydrate portions 
in here of, I don't know, like, I would make them liken it to carpet and cloth, let's say. And between those things, the structural and the insulation and these, he's able to build everything he needs. Okay, and that's, that's how he, he does his building. And fats are needed, carbohydrates are needed, and he'll assemble carbohydrates into parts that need to be inside the cell, like I say, the linen here. But they're made of individual threads of these glucose portions. A protein also is strung together. And instead of glucose being strung together, they're called amino acids. And they're all strung together. Now, here's what happens when you eat. This, this long chain, whether it be a protein or a carbohydrate, enters the small intestine and, and it needs to get from the small intestine into the bloodstream because the life of the flesh is in the blood. So God now wants to get what you just ate out of your small intestine and into your blood. And the only way he can do it is the small intestine, I don't know if you can see it, has gates, little gates. Okay, and there's a gate over there. There's a gate over there and there's a gate up there. It's got these little tiny gates. And your blood vessel has little gates too. And they're only, they're straight gates. S-T-R-A-I-T. Straight. Straight is the gate that God puts all through the body. The small intestine and blood vessels. Straight, the word is narrow. Okay, that's what it means. It's a narrow little gate. And it's only big enough to allow one molecule to pass at a time. See the picture God puts there? Folks, that's how you get in heaven. One straight is the gate. You know, I'm a born-again Christian. My wife is a born-again Christian. We had children. But when it comes to entering heaven, I had to enter alone. I couldn't enter for my wife. And she has to enter herself. And I couldn't make my children enter. I could only teach them. They're going to have to go through the gate one at a time. God only allows people in heaven one person, one soul at a time. He's going to face off with you. And He's going to ask you a question. Are you going to come through my son? Are you going to come my way? You can say yes, at which point the gate will open and he'll let you in. Or you can say no, I'm going to try religion. I'm going to hold my hand to my priest. I'm going to hang on to my sacraments. And if you do... You're going to pass right on through and off into the broad way. And the Lord does the same thing with food. I was showing my son an interesting illustration today. We'll get to in a moment. But that's the way it works. And so, so when you eat these uh, proteins and these carbohydrates, they've got to pass through. Now, a carbohydrate, a starchy, um, sugary substance, if it's eaten in a fruit or a vegetable, because it's long and in a long chain manner, it won't spike your blood sugar. And if you just eat individual, you drink pop, like all these guys, they're not hooked up, they're just individual circles coming in there. When you eat processed uh, uh, sugar and you eat a processed white bread, it's all individual little guys and they just flood the gates one after another, boom, 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 boom. But because these are linked together, the body take some time to break one link off, let it into the bloodstream, take time to break the next one off, let it in the bloodstream. And so the blood sugar doesn't spike. It comes up nice and slow and stays stable over the period of time that this breaks up. And so the Lord is able to feed you with the sugar you need over a long period of time because He's put it in the right form to you. We refine it and we break them up into individual marbles and they go pouring in and the blood sugar shoots up and then a half hour later crashes down and then you need another donut or you need another soft drink or you need whatever it is because you're going to fall asleep. So this is why you want to eat these, these things as God prepared them. Am I making sense? Are, are you following? Okay. Amen. So the starchy vegetables, beans, uh, peas, lentils, potatoes, uh, sweet uh, potatoes, things like this. They, they have what you need and they will provide you enough energy to go about the day and do the work you need to do so that you don't have to graze all day like a cow. You literally can eat, put some things in there, go about and do your work for a number of hours and come back and have another meal. Praise the Lord the way he set that up. Uh, if you do have those sugary things, you're going to have to be at the fountain constantly and, and eating seven or eight meals a day and that type of a thing. And when you do this properly, you can eat... Uh, Three meals, God does things in threes. You can eat three meals a day and, and work and do just fine, which 
I'm able to find that you can do. So, uh, I just want to help you in that way too. Eat the foods the way God has prepared them. Uh, other foods that are helpful that Dr. talks about here. Parsley is a, a very nutritious food and it's a key ingredient in this. The Mideast make a salad called tabbouleh. Have you ever had that? And they put that in there. That's a, that's a healthy food that has some grain and some healthy things in it. Now, garlic um, is really a medicine. It's a food, but it's a food that's a medicine. Um, it's been used medicinally for a long time. You go all the way back to um, Egypt, and they used it. Matter of fact, in numbers, they were talking about, remember the garlic we had in Egypt? Um, China's used it for thousands of years. They used it in Europe to treat the plague uh, back in the 1300s or wherever that was, back in the Middle Ages. Uh, they used it in World War I when the troops were having dysentery. Uh, it has anti-fungal uh, properties. It has antiviral properties, antibacterial anti-parasitic and I think anti-people properties when you eat the thing. And so, so but, but that's, that's different. But it, it, it's, a, it's a food and that's a really more of a medicine. That's why I believe the Hippocratic Oath, you go all the way back to Hippocrates and he said your best uh, uh, medicine is your best food and your best food is your best medicine. And he was right. He was kind of catching up on what the Jews knew here. One of the other advantages of fruits and vegetables besides the nutritional aspects is the fiber. Now, I want to talk about the fiber. Fiber is like a long chain that will not break up. And so, it, it, will, it will never enter the bloodstream. It just kind of passes through like a train passing through the small intestine. You go, what, what's the point of all that? Well, the point of all that is it, it cleanses the intestine. The intestine is made of muscle and it needs to contract. And if there's some large things that it can get a hold of and it keeps the intestinal muscle doing better, it decreases um, diverticulosis, diverticulitis, it decreases hemorrhoids, it decreases a lot of the problems that you'll get, um, the, the, the irritable bowel syndrome, uh, constipation, all these things, so you need some fiber in there. Uh, the different types of fiber, the fruits have them, they have uh, cellulose, which I was stunned this morning to see this uh, cellulose as, as I was just looking at the portraits that God puts in the real world of the spiritual world. I just told you a few minutes ago, a starch is made up of chains of glucose. So is cellulose. It's a chain of glucose. But the starch will release one at a time let go and allow one to go in the gate. The cellulose, which is made of glucose, will not release. It has to do with the bonding. The, the, let me get, get right again. The starch has alpha bonds. And alpha bonds are like the real light bonds, like just, hey, brother, like this. It's just, uh, so we're, I'm with you, brother. We're going to work on this thing together. Okay, it's an alpha bond. The cellulose has a beta bond. It's almost like a handcuff. It's almost like I'm not going to let go of you. And, and I just think of the... Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. You know, we're in church, we're bound together. But our bonds are only so tight. I'm willing to break the bond with any one of you in order to be with Jesus. Okay? In other words, when you're making decisions as to who your Christian friends are going to be... <laughs> Jesus is most important. And, and if I need to, like it says in Romans 16, divide from a brother that's contrary to the doctrine. Alpha bonds will let go. Beta bonds, beta, Baal, Beelzebub, they won't let go. Beta bonds hang on. Hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. I'm not letting go of this church. I was born a Catholic. I'll die a Catholic. These are my sacraments. When you hold on to something like that, you know what happens? Never gets by the straight gate. Passes right on through. That's the portrait. It's stunning how God did that. They're the exact same molecules, just bound differently. What's, who are you bound to? Who are you hanging on to? My recommendation is uh, I'll break from anyone when it comes to Jesus. As a matter of fact, it happened to me yesterday. You know, <laughs> We'll talk about it in the next service. But... Uh, when it comes to Jesus, if you love father or mother or sister or brother or son or daughter more than me, you're not worthy of me. You better let go 
and let God. Interesting portrait he puts right in the food. Stunning, absolutely stunning things. Exact same molecules, just bound differently. You want an alpha bond. You want the alpha and the omega. That's the one you want. You want to go through the straight gate. Okay, but that's, that's what that, the, the fiber is very important for cleansing. You see what happens is when we eat, anything we eat has to go through our stomach, our, our small intestine, and our large intestine. And we're taking things in. We take in heavy metals. We take in chemicals. We take in toxins. And what happens is if we don't have enough fiber to push and bind and get that stuff out, those heavy metals and those chemicals and those toxins will start to attach to the small intestine and they'll just stay there. And you say, well, that's not so bad. Well, eventually they'll take their toll on the wall of the small intestine. I mean, there's a lot of colon cancer. There's a lot of bowel cancer. There's a lot of things that happen. Not only that, eventually those chemicals... They're so small, some of them, when the gate opens for a larger molecule, they'll pass on through on its coattails and they'll get into the bloodstream. Now, that can't happen when it comes to heaven, praise the Lord, but that, that happens here. And so, so these things get in and then they circulate and then they cause problems in the body too. Uh, you need this good fiber. There's another type of fiber God puts in there besides the insoluble. It's called a soluble fiber. And, and the, the good sources of your fiber, I showed you the bran, the peels on the uh, fruits that you eat, uh, eating vegetables, high fiber cereals, is very, very good. The skins on uh, fruits and vegetables are good sources of fiber. Soluble fiber also is uh, something God gives, and it's soluble in water, and it lowers cholesterol levels. It stabilizes blood sugar. It slows your digestion, which again keeps a nice stable level in your bloodstream of the sugars. It also binds toxins and heavy metals and chemicals, and it binds bile salts. Gallbladder disease is due to too high bile salts. And Americans eat diets that are low in fiber. You know, and we take care of so many people with these gallbladder diseases and problems and they need surgery because the, the diet's wrong. I'm t most of this stuff is self-inflicted, folks. I'll tell you, the, the appendix operations, the gallbladder, the surgeons would be broken out of business if America ate right. Now, now thankfully, they'll never have to worry about it because America's not going to eat right. But there could be a few of us that if we want to, we could. And, and uh, it's not we don't like them and we don't want to give them the business. I mean, we don't want to give them. But I mean, we want to be now. Give them the gospel instead of giving them the business. So, so they're not going to get the business from us. They'll get the gospel from us. But we, we can do something. We can affect our health in a, in a major way by eating properly. Good sources of soluble fiber. Again, fruits. Uh, uh, beans. Legumes. Alfalfa. Soy. Peanuts. Lentils. Uh, carrots, oats. There's a seed called psyllium seed and flax seed. And, and on the whole, uh, a diet that is higher in fiber is a healthier diet. So less white bread and, and more fiber. Now I got a list here. I'll have to copy it for you. And this is if any of you struggle with any type of diabetes. Now, now listen, when I was young, diabetes was rare. The only diabetes was type 1 infant born diabetes now sister that's the minor minority of diabetes the majority of diabetes today is type 2 adult onset it's due to bad diet we bring it on ourselves now if you've gotten to the point where you've brought yourself there there's this thing called the glycemic index I'll make a copy of it for you and it'll tell you which of the foods and where they fall the glycemic big fancy word glyco is sugar ema Emia is blood. And it's talking about the blood sugar index, how quickly your blood sugar index will spike up. And what they do is they take a, a patient and they have them drink 100% glucose juice, just individual marbles. And they test the blood and they find how it spikes and how quickly. And then when they measure that, they call that, that's an index of 100. And then they have them eat different things like uh, celery, and here it's got all kinds of things, broccoli, avocado, asparagus, cucumber, spinach, tomatoes, zucchini, uh, peas, plums, grapefruit, peach, apple, pear, banana. They have meat, these other things, and then they compare it on that same scale and they measure it as to whether it's above 100 or below 100. Now, everything except for dates is below 100. They're all below 100. And 
They, they, a low glycemic is less than 55. Anything less than 55 is safe. So I can give you this list and you can see the majority of this list from here all the way down to here is 55. There's just a tiny portion of foods that are above 55. Raisins, they're 64. Pineapple, 66. Watermelon, 72, but still below 100. So you can have this list. So if somebody says, well, you can't follow this diet, that's not true. You can always follow God's diet. When in doubt, always follow God in the Bible rather than any doctor. Please, please. Doctors are nice men, you know, but they don't know all that much. Now, I know this because I was one. And when I graduated in 1982, what they told us at our commencement, and they were honest enough, they said 50% of what we taught you was wrong. This is true. This is my commencement ceremony. 50% of what we taught you was wrong. We just don't know which 50%. This is true, folks. I'm not lying. This is known by any good teacher in a medical school can tell you this. We don't know which 50%. So what we've really taught you the past four years is how to learn. How to go forward from here and continue learning because science is changing. Science is a false god. Don't bow to its altar. It, 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 it gets some things right, it gets some things wrong, and then it tries again and goes back to the laboratory and says, oops, I was wrong. I used to think the way to treat an ulcer was to give it milk, but now I know that's not the way to treat an ulcer, and they used to treat it that way. You know? But now they know if you give milk to someone with an ulcer, what happens? Well, inside the milk, there's a chemical that literally... 30 minutes to 40 minutes later causes the stomach to secrete more acid. And as soon as the milk washes away, more acid goes right on the ulcer and expands it. So although temporarily it feels good, it causes more damage. But they didn't know that until 1985. So and, until they find these things out, they don't know. And so, like he said, you've got to continue to learn. And that's another issue in itself. Because <laughs> so, so my point is... Uh, this, this index may help because it will show you that God's foods are safe. And if in doubt and you want to trust this index, you can go ahead. But I always tell someone, look, if you get on the right diet of living foods, God will help your, your diabetes. As a matter of fact, I was helping a guy not too long ago that was uh, struggling with diabetic issues. And, um, and I talked to him about some of these living foods and, and altering his diet. And after a month, he and his wife called back and they take the blood sugars at home and they keep a little diary. And they said the blood sugars have consistently dropped and for the first time we're getting readings below the triple digit level. They're getting readings of 98 and 97 for the first time in years because they're eating the way God said to do it. You can always trust the Lord. He'll take care of you. He loves you. We mess things up. We're the ones that mechanize and change all this stuff. Whole grains are other very important foods to eat whole grains, living foods, rich in fiber, uh, whole grain bread, whole grain brown rice, whole grain pasta, whole grain cereal. They're, they're full of nutrients. They have lots of vitamins, lots of minerals. Now, the key word to look for when you're out there, look for the word whole, W-H-O-L-E, and the word sprouted. Be careful because the industry... And I understand, I don't want to fault them. They're trying to maximize their yield. And when you do like a, a, a whole grain or you do a pressed oil, you get less yield than when you refine it through a machine. You can increase the yield. Like, like you get more meat in a hot dog than you do from a kosher butcher because you know the kosher butcher is going to throw away the gizzard and he's going to throw away all the parts that are bad and the hot dog is going to crank up everything in there and just put it together and give it to you. And they maximize the yield. Whole grains get less of a yield, so the industry has gone to something called cracked wheat. Have you ever heard that term? Cracked wheat. Another word they use is something called bulgar. B-U-L-G-U-R. Those are those are processed and they're not as good as the whole or the sprout. They'll use another thing. They'll say seven grain bread and they'll have a real nice wrapping on it and it'll look like whole. It's, it's just seven grains. It's not whole grain. 
They just took a little oats and refined it and a little barley and refined it and a little wheat and refined it and packaged it and were hoping you were ignorant enough not to know. So, but, you know, you've been forewarned. So, so watch out for that. Uh, so don't trust the packaging artwork. Look at the ingredients. Is it whole? Is it sprouted? Amen. Now, if it's whole or if it's sprouted, I want to tell you something. It's not going to last a long time. It's going to go bad quickly. As a matter of fact, remember in Exodus chapter 16 when the Lord gave manna? What happened if you didn't eat manna that day? What happened by the next day? Yeah, it bred worms. Why? It was so healthy, other stuff fed on it. When you got something that lasts in your cupboard or on your shelf and nothing will feed on it, it ain't good. Okay? So, so, so that's why, I mean, they do these things to prolong the shelf life, but in doing that, they take all the healthy enzymes and nutrients and vitamins out, and they have a dead food there that, that uh, bacteria and fungi like to live on. Well, or even won't live on. They, they, they won't even live on it. They're smart enough not to. So, so there is a, a bread, I told you about it, Ezekiel bread. Have you ever seen that bread? That's a very good bread at the health food store. It's made right out of uh, what was given to Ezekiel. I can't remember what chapter. Four, chapter four, yeah, and, and yes, and that's the thing. When you get those breads, you got to refrigerate them, you know, because that that keeps the bacteria away. They always ask me, why do you keep the operating room so cold? <laughs> because bacteria doesn't grow well in a cold environment. I mean, I don't like it. We don't like it who are in there. I don't like working in a fifty-five degree box all day long. Okay, but. It keeps the bacteria count down. And if you warm that room up to over 70 degrees and you go around with a swab and you check, there's bacteria growing everywhere. And so that's why they keep it. So refrigerators keep the bacteria count down, so you've got to keep this stuff in the fridge. Uh, look for, there's another bread called manna bread. They're made from live sprouted grains. they they uh, got to be refrigerated quickly because they'll go bad quickly too, just like the manna did. Um, limit consumption of one of the grains. The limit your consumption of is corn, maize, corn. Uh, it's very starchy. It really is used to, to fatten up pigs and cattle. And, and uh, so it's just limit your consumption of that. And that includes popcorn. You know, just have that as an occasional snack, it says. All right, now fats, the last thing. We talked about the bad fats, the ones that have been processed by man. There are good fats. Good fats are very necessary. All your cells are made with fatty membranes around them. Very well insulated, every cell. Very important to the health of that particular cell. Remember, we are warm-blooded animals, okay? So we need insulation against the warm and against the cold, and that, that fat naturally provides it. And it's in every membrane, not the extra fat, the fat that's contained in the membrane of the cells. And so you need that for the health of your heart, your brain, uh, your organs. Uh, all these cell membranes are nourished and strengthened by proper fats. There's two types of proper fats. There's monosaturated fats that naturally occur in olive oil. Olive oil is probably the healthiest oil. Now, the way you want to get it is um, pressed olive oil. There's two ways to extract oil. One is the old-fashioned way that they did it in Israel. They press Gethsemane where they would press. There was the olive trees up there. The wine press, they would press, and out would come the oil. Now, the extraction yield is a little lower than what they like to do. They use uh, these um, centrifuges now, and they mechanically spin them at high rates. And when they do that, uh, they increase the yield, but it it causes a change in the oil to an acid. It, it acidifies and puts a rancid characteristic to the, to the oil. And then what they'll do after that is then they'll just heat it up and, and then they'll change the color of it. And that's how most of your oils are found in the store. But you want to get a pressed oil. There's a virgin olive oil and that is like 98 plus percent pure oil with just a tiny trace, maybe 1.6 percent of a little bit of oleic acid in there. And then there's extra virgin where they've gone a little bit further, and that's 99.2 percent pure, and it's got 0.8 percent oleic acid. Either one of those is excellent, an excellent uh, source of fats. Other good fats, monosaturated fats, peanut butter, not the processed kind. 
the kind where they actually grind the peanuts up and the natural peanut oil is in there. You get that. You got to refrigerate that kind. Okay, I, you can buy it at a health food store. Maybe does Wegmans sell that, sister? I, I don't know. Okay, they, the Wegmans is good. They have a lot of good things there. Um, avocados, macadamia nuts, other nuts like almonds and walnuts and hazelnuts, but but these are raw, not the processed, roasted, salted, flavored, candied kind. Okay, the raw ones have the natural, monosaturated, healthy fats in there for repairing the the tissues in your body. And, and go easy with them. You know, don't don't go nuts on them. Okay, okay, go go easy. Just just have a little bit, and uh, you got to leave them uh, sealed. And after 30 days, they become rancid, and then so either eat them or, or get rid of them. Um, there's another type of acid that's very, or fatty acid that's very important. It's called the omega-3 fatty acid. And uh, there are three types of those. And all of those uh, omega-3 fatty acids, uh, one of them, the DHA, is very helpful for the brain. It, it helps against Alzheimer's. It helps children who have ADHD. It helps with impaired learning because the brain uh, fires down these long axons and dendrites that are all wrapped in, in the proper fatty acids that God's put around them, the right fats. And if there's a breach because there wasn't enough proper fatty acid to build that and there becomes a gap, then sometimes the signal is just interrupted and it doesn't go. It'd be like having a wire and you strip the outside of it and it's bare and the signal just interrupts and sparks all over the place, but it doesn't get where it's supposed to go. So it's very important and I think we, we suffer from this in this country. It, it, man, kids can't seem to, to sit still nowadays. They, they're just, they're, they're firing all over the place. Their nervous system isn't working properly. I think it has a lot to do with, with the diet that these poor kids are fed. So those uh, uh, omega-3, that's a DHA. There's another one, EPA, and that uh, helps the heart, and it helps anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer. And then there's linoleic acid, and that's another one. And these are all found in walnuts, green vegetables, flaxseed oil, things like this. Um, and the best source of all is like Jesus served them in John chapter 21. What did he do when he brought them to the shore? He gave them fish, salmon. Fish, fish oil supplements are the best sources of those particular things. Um, now about fried foods. If, if you enjoy fried foods, and I've got to admit they taste good, you know, although I don't, I don't eat them. But, but I mean, if I did, you know, I mean, I remember sort of, kind of. The thing to do would be go to something called stir frying rather than regular frying. What happens when, when they fry something is, is there's peroxides that build up in the oil, lipid peroxides, and these things just spew out free radicals. And free radicals, first off, the liver gets most of the damage because the liver tries to process them, but free radicals just, they fly through the gates, they go into the bloodstream, they fly across the bloodstream, they go into every tissue they're at, and what they do is they go right into the center of the cell, they go right for the nucleus, and they bust up the chromosomes. And cancer is due to chromosomal abnormalities. And these free radicals are probably one of the major causes of the cancer that we have. And uh, you just got to be careful about this type of stuff. I mean, think of what we feed the kids, French fries, fried chicken strips, fried onion rings, stuff like that. We're setting these kids up. It's just, uh, uh, you know, the disease rates are just going up. I mean, I see kids having diseases. When I was little, in 1959, when I first went to school, there was only one fat kid in the class. We knew him by name. The rest of them looked like me. There was only one kid with asthma in the class. We didn't have all these problems. Back then they were still eating natural foods. There wasn't, McDonald's hadn't been born yet. But once McDonald's was born and then all the McDonald's lookalikes, the Burger Kings and the Wendy's and all of them, and then the, the donut places have popped up and now kids are eating out of boxes and processed foods, we're killing ourselves. And so you want to eat these uh, living foods. Avoid frying in polyunsaturated fats. Avoid corn oil, sunflower oil, soybean oil, safflower oil. If, if you got to stir fry, you want to do it. He's got a couple of recommendations here. Um, uh, olive oil 
is good. And then there was some other thing that I'd never heard of. And uh, you'll have to get the book and read it. As some of you are cooks, you can go over this type of thing here. What's it called? He, he says there's a coconut oil is good, organic butter, and organic G-H-E-E. I don't even know what that is. I always thought a ghee was an Italian, but uh, this, is some, this is something different. Organic ghee and, uh, or, and, and organic macadamia nut oil. And these have high smoke points, and therefore they reduce the radicals. So again, the living foods. What are the living foods we want? Fruits, vegetables, whole grains. You want to build the foundation of your daily diet on these three things. Make that at least two-thirds of what you take in over the course of a day and you'll be healthier. And then when the Spirit is willing, the flesh will say, hey, let's go do that. Let's go out and serve the Lord today. All right, and then the next hour we'll talk about Second Corinthians and learn some other things. Let's pray. Father, thank you for uh, giving us uh, the Bible to show us the healthy way wherein we should walk and, and we should eat. And uh, Lord, help us. Uh, actually, it tastes good. I've been doing it. It's a blessing. Help us all to slowly uh, order our steps in the right direction so that we can be uh, strong and we can walk in the Spirit. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.